Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode's going to be Gunsmoke, original air date, September 13th, 1954, and the title is Dooley Surrenders. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Well, what are you doing up so early, Doc? Early? <laughs> it's almost noon. Well, that's early for some people. Oh, early for some people. <laughs> I didn't come here to get into any personal arguments, Matt. I want to borrow one of your shotguns. Borrow a shotgun? Well, who do you think you are, Doc Holliday? All righty, I've asked you nice. Now I'll just help myself. Good. It's loaded. But I'll need more than these two shells... Where do you keep them? Well, fetch him a handful, Chester. Yes, sir. Yes, at least a handful. <laughs> no telling what I might run into. Here you are. What's the matter? Don't you trust your aim, Doc? Or are you planning to blow up a whole lot of people? None of your business, but I have to go up the river to Pierceville for a week or so, and I thought I might bag a few quail and prairie chicken along the way. Well, that won't make very good eating, Doc. Oh, well, that's so, and why not? Well, all you're going to get is feathers. Oh, all I'm going to get is what? We don't keep those guns here to shoot birds with, you know. Yeah, awful. Oh, here, Chester, give me some decent ammunition. Well, you? you didn't say what you wanted it for, Doc. Do I have to explain I'm not a murderer? <laughs> this the U.S. Marshal's office? Yeah, that's right. Come on in, mister. I got something to tell you, Marshal. Okay. First, you better say my name. Damn it, Dooley. All right, Dooley. Now, for what I got to tell you. I've been skinning hides, Marshal, working for a buffalo hunter named a culpit. You know him? No, I don't. Well, there was this culpit and his partner, Faber, and me and the cook. Nobody knows the cook's name. We just call him the cook. And we was camped up the Arkansas River at Turkey Bend. You know where that is? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, sir... Culpit, he broke out some whiskey night before last, and we all took to drinking it. And, Marshal, it's a bad thing, but when I drink whiskey, I get kind of senseless. Well, most men do, do they? Not like me. I go crazy wild. You won't believe it to look at me, Marshal, but I'm a dangerous man when I'm drinking whiskey. I see. Well, uh, what happened the other night? That fellow Faber I was telling you about? Yeah. I killed him, Marshal. You did? Yes, sir. I shot and killed him. I don't know why I did it, except that I was senseless drunk on that whiskey. I don't even remember doing it, Marshal, but when I come to next morning, them other fellas told me about it. They'd already buried him. They showed me his grave. Poor old Faber. I feel awful bad I did it. Dooley, most men, when they kill somebody, don't come tell the law about it. Why did you? 
I never killed nobody before, Marshal, and I can't have shooting Faber on my mind. I, I had to come. Well, where are the rest of these people? Culpit and the cook. Ooh, they went off onto the prairie somewhere hunting buffalo. I got no idea where they are. Well, you going to hang them, Marshal? No, no, I don't hang men. Then what I come here for? You the law, ain't you? Look, Dooley, nobody gets hung before they get tried. And I can't send you up for trial unless I see the body of the man you killed. But I told you, Marshal, it was Faber I killed. Okay, okay, it was Faber, but I got to testify that a crime has been committed and the law reads I can't do that without seeing the body. You calling me a liar? No, I'm not calling you a liar. Then I don't understand none of this. Well, don't you worry about it, Dooley. I'll take care of it. How? I'll ride out to Turkey Bend and find the grave. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Marshal. No, sir, not in this weather. Well, I don't have to bring him into Dodge, Dooley. I can leave him buried there. Oh. Oh, well, I'll go with you. No. No, you won't. It's a bad enough trip as it is. You don't like me because I'm a murderer. I like you fine, Dooley. I mean... Chester, will you lock him up? Turkey Bend was about 20 miles up the Arkansas. And since he was headed that way, Doc Adams rode along with us. We reached the campsite about mid-afternoon, but it took us another hour to find the grave. There was no marker on it. And in fact, only the color of the fresh turned earth made it possible to find it all. Chester and I did the shovel work, and Doc did the examining. What's he taking so long for, Mr. Dillon? Oh, Doc's slow, Chester, but he doesn't miss much. Well, what's there to miss? He's just a shot man. I mean, a Doc shot man. I mean, a man... Never mind, Chester. Oh, he's through now. You can put him back now. I, I've seen all I need. Well, I should hope so, Doc. What was you looking for, measles? It isn't what I was looking for, Chester. It's what I found. Oh, what do you mean, Doc? Matt, I remember Dooley saying he shot this man. Is that right? Well, that's what he said. Well, little Dooley got it all mixed up. Faber there didn't die from a bullet. He died from a knife. What? Right through the heart. A knife, huh? Yeah, Dooley sure did get it mixed up. That or somebody told him wrong. It don't make sense. Well, that would make more sense if I could talk to Culpit. Well, how are you ever going to find him out here? He could be anywhere, any direction. We might be weeks looking for him. Now, we'll make him come to us, Chester. Him and the cook both. Come to us? How? You'll see. When we get back to Dodge. Almost 100 years ago, Charles Kingsley wrote that tobacco is a lone man's companion, a bachelor's friend, a hungry man's food, a sad man's cordial, a wakeful man's sleep, and a chilly man's fire. These words describe what Chesterfield means to millions of smokers today. You and I smoke for relaxation, for comfort, for satisfaction, and in the whole wide world. No cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. Only Chesterfield has the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Tobaccos that are highest in quality, low in nicotine. Best for you. Get a carton of Chesterfield today. Chesterfield regular. Chesterfield king size. Both at the same price in most places. Bring him in, Chester. Come on, Dooley. Sun is up and the dew is almost gone from all the little plants and flowers. Uh, Chester woke me up, Marshal. You're going to have to do your sleeping somewhere else from now on, Dooley. I can sleep anywhere, anytime. That's what I like about winter. Nothing to do but sleep. 
Dooley, I'm turning you loose. What? I don't want you to leave Dodge, but I don't want you in jail either. What's the matter with me being in jail? I, I shot a man, didn't I? You saw the body, didn't you? You got the evidence? Now, don't you worry about it, Dooley. Just do what I tell you to. I want you to stay in Dodge, but not in jail. What? I got no money. I got nothing to eat. I got no place to sleep. I, I'm a buffalo skinner. How am I going to get a job in Dodge? Here, Dooley. Here, here's, uh... Uh, here's ten dollars. Now, you... You, you can live on that fine. No. Now, go on. Take it. Well, okay. But I'm not a man to borrow money. Now, you, you're doing me a favor. I should have made culprit pay me off. Like he said, it didn't make sense. Me being in jail, I couldn't spend nothing. They may pay you off yet, Dooley. What? Uh, no, never mind. But look, if I catch you drinking that money, I'm going to take it away from you and you'll starve. Oh, I won't be drinking, Marshal. Didn't I tell you how crazy and dangerous I am when I drink whiskey? No, sir, I won't do that. Good. Now, if anybody asks you why you're not in jail, tell them I said I'm waiting for something. Waiting for what? Well, say, I didn't tell you. And one other thing. Don't you tell anybody we rode out and found Faber's body. Don't tell anybody at all. Just forget about that. I'm all mixed up, Marshal. Am I still under arrest? No, no, do it. Now, why don't you go on and get out of here? I got work to do, huh? Can I come see you sometime? You and Chester? Uh, sure, sure. Of course you can. But I don't want you hanging around here all day. Okay. I won't. Just once in a while. I wouldn't feel right otherwise, Marshal. Me being a murderer and all. So long. So long, Dewey. Bye, Dewey. Mr. Dillon? What, Chester? How come you didn't tell Dooley that Faber was killed with a knife? He's still thinking he shot him in poor little castle. I know. I'm sorry I have to do it this way, but word will get around. It'll get clear out onto the prairie, even. And when it does, I don't want Carpet and the cook to be scared off. I only want them to be real curious. So curious they'll come to Dodge and start asking questions. Well, what good will that do? Well, we'll find out when they get here, Chester. Sugar, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, no, thanks, Chester. No, sir, I didn't mean did you on some. I meant I wanted some. Oh, oh. Yeah. Thank you. This coffee's mighty black tonight. Ch Chester, you know, sugar's not going to change the color of the coffee. No, sir, but it sure sweetens it up. <clears throat> yeah. Well, look at the hair. It's dooley. Huh? Oh, Dooley. <laughs> well, sit down. Have a cup of coffee, huh? Well, ain't you going to say hello, Dooley? I can't stand it no more. You got to help me. Oh, what's the matter, Dooley? What's troubling you? Two days. I've been out of jail two days. I, I can't go to another one, Mark. Well, why? What is it? Well, everybody treats me bad. They won't have nothing to do with me. They say I admit shooting a man, I ought to be in jail. I'm talking about you too, Marshal, for letting me out. Uh, people talk whatever I do. Well, I can't face them out no more. And anyways, I did kill him. I ought to be in jail. Well, Marshal, this way I feel like I feel like I'd stole a sheep. That's how I feel, just like I'd stole a sheep. I'm sorry, Dooley. You gotta help me. Last night, they wouldn't even let me sleep in the room in the house or the hotel, nor no place. Seems to me the citizens of Dodge are getting mighty high-minded all of a sudden. But I'll help you, Dooley. Thanks, Marshal. But not in jail. I can't let you stay there. But there's a shack out back of the jail. It belongs to Doc. He stores some stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> 
stay out tonight, and, and I'll give you some blankets, Julie. We got plenty of them around. Doc might find me and shoot me or something. Oh, no, he won't do that. He won't be back for a week or more. Anyway, he'll be glad you're using the place. Well, can I stay in it all day, too? Sure you can. And if you'll show yourself somewhere every now and then, you know? I don't want anybody to think that you've left Dodge. I gotta eat. Will that do it? Fine, fine. Okay. But, Marshal, I'd sure like to know what a man has to do to get jailed in Dodge City, Kansas. <laughs> I don't know what Dooley did to pass the time, but for the next few days he hid day and night in Doc's shack back of the jail and came out only to eat a meal in the restaurant now and then. I felt sorry for him, but I'd have felt sorrier if he'd been hung for a crime I knew he was innocent of. A week passed and nothing happened until one day when I went into the general store after a new watch chain I'd ordered. Mr. Jonas wasn't there, but Kitty was. Hello, Matt. Hey, Kitty. You gonna buy that hat? Like it? Oh, it looks fine, fine. Really? You sure? Oh, yeah, take it. You won't do better than that. I had Mr. Jonas order it six months ago. Huh? Oh, well, the mails are slow sometimes. It came on the Santa Fe, Matt, not by Pony Express. What? I ordered this hat six months ago. It arrived four months ago, and I've been wearing it ever since. <laughs> Uh, where's Mr. Jonas, Kitty? I'm glad you like it, though. He's out back trying to sell somebody a new wagon. Oh? oh well, that's a bigger item than my watch chain. I, I better come back tomorrow. Wait. Here he comes now. The wagon you can buy, mister. Now, I guarantee you, you'll never have any trouble with it. It's too expensive. What's the matter with them kind of struggle people? They raise their prices every year. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If I don't sell that wagon by noon tomorrow, you can have it $50 off. You mean that? You have my word, noon tomorrow. And I'm camped down on the river, right where the cotton was beginning. Suppose you drive it out there at noon. No, no. If you want it, you'll have to pick it up here. I got only one man in my camp. My cook. That's why I asked. Where are the rest of your men? Dead or gone. And I'll be picking up a new crew before I head out again. Hey, you shouldn't have any trouble finding hide skinners around here. I'll do it tomorrow when I come in for the wagon. Oh, by the way... I heard there's a friend of mine in town, a fellow called Dooley. You know where I could find him? Well, no, I don't. But here's the man to ask. Uh, I don't know any Dooley. I never even heard of him. What? I'd uh, like to get my watch chain, though. Uh, has it come in yet? Well, yes, but I... We've been waiting half an hour, Mr. Jonas. Aren't you ever going to be through with him? Don't get in a fret, lady. He's through now. See you at noon tomorrow, storekeeper. Sure, sure. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Sure, Matt. Now, what is this all about, Marshal? Mr. Jonas, that man's name is Carlton. I've been waiting a long time for him to get here. Oh, now I understand. It was his partner Dooley killed. Uh, that's why he was saying he's running his outfit alone now that he's got all the money. Is that what he said? Yes, and he also said something about taking care of the law here before he left. Of course, I didn't think anything about it at the time. Lots of men talk like that. Yeah, yeah, I guess they do. But, uh, Carlpit may mean it. Ah, oh, hello, Doc. When would you get back? Oh, a couple of hours ago, man. Well, what are you doing in here, Dooley? Doc found me in his shack out back, Marshal. We've been talking. Talking? Well, Matt, I just got back. I didn't know what was going on here. Doc told me about Faber. He says he was killed with a knife. He says I didn't shoot him. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I, I guess you didn't want him to know. Oh, it's all right, Doc. It doesn't matter now. Is that true, Marshal, I didn't kill Faber? Yeah, it's true, Dooley. Carpet killed him. Pretty mean of him. Tell me to go get hung for it. Pretty doggone mean. Well, it's all over now, Dooley. I'll take care of Colbert. How? Oh, you just go on saying I done it. Look, I want you to leave Dodge. Go someplace where Colbert can't find you. Then I'm going down to his camp while he's in town tomorrow and arrest the cook. 
Well, the cook, you said culprit done. Well, he did. But I'm going to throw the cook in jail and then take culprit. When I tell him the cook has told me the whole story, I think I can break culprit down and he'll confess. That culprit don't care about nothing. Tell me I done it. Marshal, I wish I'd never gone to work for that man. Well, you'd have been better off if you hadn't, do it. But you're out of trouble now. Unless culprit finds you. So you get out of Dodge as fast as you can, huh? I'll get Chester to find you a horse of some kind. He's a wicked man, Culpert is. A wicked, wicked man. Sure. Oh, now, you get going, Dooley, huh? And, uh, good luck to you. Thank you, Marshal. You've been as good as you could be to me, I guess. Yeah. Sometime, if I dodge again, I'll come see you, maybe. Uh, sure, any time, Dooley. I'll be glad to see you. Well, so long. So long, Marshal. There are more than 60 million cigarette smokers in America who smoke many brands. In choosing your cigarette, be sure to remember this. You will like Chesterfield best. Because only Chesterfield has the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Tobaccos that are highest in quality, low in nicotine. Best for you. You and I smoke for relaxation, for comfort, for satisfaction. And in the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like a Chesterfield. You smoke with the greatest possible pleasure when your cigarette is Chesterfield. The right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Yes, these six words, highest in quality, low in nicotine, mean Chesterfield is best for you. Buy them king size. Get a carton of Chesterfield today. Chesterfield regular. Chesterfield king size. Both at the same price in most places. I gave Chester ten dollars to buy Dooley a mount with, but he couldn't find much of a horse for that. So they settled on an old jack mule. I didn't see Dooley again, but Chester told me later that he'd grub staked him with another ten out of his own pocket when he saw him off. I guess we both felt a little guilty about the way I'd had to treat him. Anyway, the next day, just after noon, we rode down to the river to pick up the cook and bait the trap for the real murderer, Culpit. How are you going to find this camp, Mr. Dillon? Well, he said it was where the cottonwoods began, Chester. Oh, right over there. It'll kindly spoil everything if Culpit decided not to go to town after all, won't it? Yeah, it sure would. There's his horses. Yeah. There ain't no smoke, Cole. That cook ain't cooking nothing. Uh, with Culpit in town, he's probably asleep, Chester. Hey, he's shooting at us. Yeah. There's a hole up ahead, Chester. Right for it. Ah. All right, leave your horse, Chester. I told you Culpit didn't go in town, Mr. Dell. Well, Culpit's a buffalo hunter, Chester. He couldn't miss at that range with his eyes closed. That's the cook. Oh. What's the cook shooting at us for? Well, I'll ask him. What's the matter with you? You drunk? I'm drunk. I'm crazy wild drunk. It's Dooley. Dooley, stop it. It's Marshal Dillon and Chester. I know who it is. I want to kill you too. Kill us too? I don't kill Culpit and the cook with a sharp rifle and I'm going to kill you. Culpit was lying about me killing Faber. I never killed nobody in my life before, but I'm starting now. Oh, with that ten dollars I give him, he must have gone and drunk it up. Yeah. Dooley! I know you're drunk, but we're gonna sit here in this hole till you sober up. Do you hear me? I ain't gonna sober up. I'm gonna kill people. You can't stay drunk forever. We'll wake you out. Come on out of there. Come on out, I tell you. <laughs> 
You're wasting ammunition, Dooley. You can't hit us here. Then I'm coming after you. I'm going to walk right up there and shoot you. No. No, Dooley, don't do it. I'll have to kill you if you try it. Here I come, Marshal. Don't do it, Dooley. I'm going to kill everybody. I'll get over there as far as I can, Mr. Dillon. Then we can both jump him. I sure hate to, but we can't let him kill us. No, Chester, it's my job. I'll do it. All right, stay down now. You can't get away from Dooley. Nobody can. Throw your hat in the air, Chester. He'll look at it for just a second. Yes, sir. Oh, that's it, Chester. Come on. Dooley. Dooley. You killed me. I didn't kill you. You killed me. Dooley, you're the last man in the world I wanted to kill. Culpit and you cook. They're dead. I shot them. Culpit was a mean, wicked man, Marshal. Yeah, he was. Marshal? What? I'll come say hello to you next time I'm in Dodge. You said I could. Yeah, yeah, you, you come, do we? Mm-hmm. Sure, you. You come any time you want. Thanks, Marshal. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Mr. Dillon, that's, that's terrible. But you must feel even worse than I do. Oh, um, I mean... Well, Never mind the talk, Chester. Now, let's get busy. We got three men to bury. Like I'm filtered... Like them king size? Then for you, this is it. King size L and M filters at the same low price as L and M regular. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Buy L and M filters, just what the doctor ordered. It's America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy a carton, king size or regular, both at the same low price. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and James Musser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. Listen to Dragnet Radio at its new time, a half hour earlier, Tuesday night on another network. And remember, next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke over the CBS Radio Network. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. 
Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.